Hello, everybody. Welcome to A Type Y 2020 All Over. I'm your moderator, Eric, here in Tokyo. So, in this section, we are very happy to welcome our speaker from Shanghai, whose name is Willy Liu. Now he's also in the in the virtual room now. Willy Liu, hello. Willy Liu is a type designer at Three Type, based in Shanghai, and uh, he's fascinated by typography and multi-script matchmaking. And he is also for uh, the creator of the Dinky Bitmap, uh, um, multi-script typeface bearing on Hanzi legibility in extreme conditions. So I think this is the main theme that he main topic that he will talk today. So uh, the topic is bitmapping Chinese. This is a pixel. It can be either empty or full. This is a matrix of pixels. By turning their individual status, the matrix from different patterns. This is a tiny bitmap image. If the matrix grows a little bigger, it can represent specific shapes, letters. A 5x5 five five pixel matrix is enough to accommodate every single lighting uppercase, plus numerals. You have a font available for use. If more pixels are at your disposal, you can add a lot more details and styles and their implications to the font, be it bold, italic, bodoni, or comic sans. Pixels are beautiful, so it's with my font. But here comes Chinese, where complex jokes and components stacking and wrapping all together and all over. And the smallest usable character set includes a couple thousand of glyphs, and a more complete one can easily go beyond the size of an OTF. To fit Chinese characters, also known as Hanzi, in a limited pixel grid, is to stuff an elephant into a refrigerator, or worse, to put thousands of elephants of different sizes into refrigerators of the same capacity. So how do we actually bitmap Chinese? Bitmap fonts played an important role in China's entry into the digital era. In the 80s, Shanghai Printing Technology Institute, SPTI, designed the first sets of Chinese bitmap fonts in 15 by 16, 24 by 24, and 32 by 32. Beautifully reproducing the traditional Song style, these fonts are based on the Song T number 2 typeface, which was also a product of SPTI just earlier. They were not just tracing the typeface using grids, instead, all the pixels were delicately arranged in the grids to form the bars and curves of the Song style. These fonts were released in the 85 to 86 as China's national standard for VO and remain popular ever since. Among the three bitmap fonts designed by SPTI, the 15 by 16 one was the most remarkable. In the restricted pixel grid, to recreate the most important feature of song style, the stroke contrast was impossible. But the designer skillfully expressed the particulars of this style in these rich details. Take a look at the terminals and the curvatures of the diagonal strokes. Various type foundries have also released the different versions of this bitmap font with slight modifications. We still see all these versions in our daily life today. Almost at the same time, Japanese designer Takao Hayashi designed a set of 15 by 16 pixel font. Hayashi's design has an elegant mutual appearance, different from the earlier G's 16 bitmap font, which was introduced in 1984, using a different strategy to achieve a clearer and mechanical Gothic or sans looking. By the way, these sizes are decided by technical reasons. 15 by 16 is technically a 16 pixel square, one more pixel to make room for spacing. And multiples of 8 can be efficiently described in bytes. 
Now, if you know something about Chinese characters or Hanzi, or Kanji, Hanja for that matter, you may see the problem immediately. Chinese characters differ a lot in structure and complexity. 16 pixels do not seem enough to accommodate every character. Not to mention the notorious Bihong, which is rarely used in the daily life. Even an everyday word like Liang has 9 horizontal strokes. To reproduce it correctly, let alone faithfully, we would have needed at least 17 pixels in height. How is bitmapping Chinese in this sense possible then? Here comes magic. We can actually simplify the glyphs, their shapes, parts, and structures without losing legibility. Please note in this talk, when I say simplify, I'm not referring to the movement or policy of Han's simplification, which eventually resulted in the simplified Chinese used in mainland China, Malaysia, and Singapore. In another word, the simplification that I'm talking about is merely a matter of design on the glyphs level, as opposed to orthographic changes of the character itself. So back to glyphs. If a hands is relatively simple, like R, Sun, or Ri, Mu, then every single stroke matters. It will become a different character if added or removed. But if it has quite a lot of strokes, and convoluted structures, it's totally okay to combine or remove or reconstruct or transform some of them so as to simplify the overall shapes of the glyphs. Especially when we have a box-like structure in a more complex hands, we can actually change its inside to whatever we like, and it's still readable. This has been a common practice in logotype design as stipulated in various versions of the National Standard GB5199, a document dealing with the 15 by 16 bitmap font. Around 100 out of the most commonly used 7000 characters have simplified or literally reduced and abridged strokes different from what's recommended as formal and correct. Note that here, such simplification can only be used for small size digital displays. In official publications, they would be regarded as non-standard characters. Take it easy, I will explain this page. In the latest version of GB5199, the simplification is mainly in four ways. The first one, this is the most often used method. If two or more parallel strokes are at next to each other, one or two of them can be removed. It doesn't have to be strictly in parallel, of course. The second one, similar to the previous method, this one, however, is not limited to parallel strokes. Entire structures can be rearranged, strokes merged and combined, leading to a topological change of the glyph structure. So next one, if a character cannot be simplified with the methods above, you have to make up something new. For example, in the character Zuan, the box structure here is not high enough to accommodate even one horizontal bar, so the designer chose to make the bars diagonal. As for Ying, these strokes are shortened because the inner space is too narrow for them. This could also be regarded as the first method, removing parallel strokes. Think as if the strokes inside were cut out. The last one. This method is rarely used, only in one kind of structure as in Chu and Dao. The horizontal bars inside could have been reduced, but the designers decided to follow the cursive writing tradition and turn them into a vertical stroke. 15 by 16 is good, and it is everywhere today in the streets, subways, or shopping malls. But it is still a little big, especially for personal computers. We can see a bitmap Chinese of this size on Windows 3.2, which supported both traditional and simplified Chinese. Comparing to the Latin letters, such 16 pixel glyphs couldn't offer enough space in the title or menu bars. There is still room for further simplification, 
These are 11 by 11 pixel fonts in ancient Macs or PCs. You can find even smaller hands on the earlier Mac OS 8.5. Here you can see 8x8 characters secondary to the 11x11 main font. There are also traditional Chinese fonts of the same size. These fonts also belong to Beijing and Taipei typefaces in the Mac OS. That's really crazy. Such small characters look fine in context. But if seen individually or in real-world combinations, their legibility become dangerously low. And this is one of my most precious childhood memories, Red Alert 2, a game by Westwood Studios. Guess what? You can see 8x8 bitmap hands here, and in traditional Chinese. I have to point out its legibility issues. As a kid who didn't read much traditional Chinese, I had been misreading many weapons names for years. The unbeatable Soviet Apocalypse tank looks just like a Chinese tank. The Or Manor looks like Iodine Manor. Now, fast forward. Three and a half years ago, I began to wonder why is the limit of small bitmap hands? How is stream, can we shrink, and bitmap a Chinese character without losing its contextual legibility? How many pixels do we need? I found a Japanese typeface called Misaki Gothic that was in 7x7. At the first sight, I could tell the characters are a Japanese design, not Chinese, despite the fact that it's just a 7x7, and that kanji and hands are technically share the same characters most of the time. I will explain why later. Before starting my own project of Creating the smallest hands bitmap font, I needed to prove that 7x7 is theoretically possible for a functional Chinese font. When I say font, I mean that at least a set of around 7,000 most commonly used hands. Here is my reasoning. Most hands form a left and right structure, and within L and R characters, most of them can be divided into one smaller part and one bigger. The smaller part, or sometimes called radicals, could be like this and etc. At least 3 pixel width is needed to house the small parts to create meaningful differences among them. This is for the smaller part. The bigger part then requires at least one more. Then the overall width would be 7 pixel. It sounds just reasonable. In fact, I have seen a Japanese bitmap font, which is 5 by 7 as shown here. It is an adventurous piece of work, but I don't think it really works, especially if kanjis are shown alone, as in Chinese. I first started my experiment with Qianzuwen, a sort of Chinese pangram that consists nearly 1000 different characters. Some are simple, some are quite complex. So here is a version 1. After that, I tried to expand this Qianzuwen into a full function typeface. I used the glyphs to dot the pixels. It really took a long time. It really took a long time. And finally, after three and a half years, it's finished. Compared to the 8x8 fonts on macOS, the pixels available for me is not just one pixel less, but in fact, a quarter less. So my design references were extremely limited. I had to constantly find different ways to construct the characters. I also couldn't just copy Misaki Gothic because Chinese see hands quite differently. That's a whole other topic though. Now let's take a closer look at how I treated these characters. Basically, I followed the same methods as SPTS, reducing parallel strokes combining structures, so on and so forth. I tried my best not to revamp the strokes or use cursive forms in order to ensure every character looks just as a standard written hand. The simplification was massive though. For example, look at this Ju. My design decisions were based on strokes instead of outlines or shapes. Although the result is that it would be recognized by its overall visual shape in a context with other characters. Pixel images are inherently ambiguous in this size, 
When pixelized glyph may be easily thought as a different one, even though their original looking doesn't resemble at all. This is my xian in a previous version, and someone read it as qi. Even more ridiculously, this chen was seen by my colleague as mei. I try to avoid this in later versions. This is the final version of xian and zhen. I had to make such modifications many times. To efficiently use the strictly limited pixels, I also introduced my own methods or tricks. First one, for fun, the upper part is extremely complex, consisted of three pieces. In the bitmap glyph, all the three parts could be seen from the mass. Second one, in Niao, there is no room for the uppermost stroke, so I cut off the corner to create a sense of diagonality, making the invisible stroke visible. When making a pixel hanzi, some comments on the web would insist that there shouldn't be black spots, but in the 7x7 canvas, it's unavoidable. I would rather keep the sense of crowdness in the character, as in the Tian of Yo. If it's empty here, it would become another character. The middle part of Yu has to be crowded. And after indulging myself in the 7x7 world, I also designed a set of 9x9 Chinese. The 9 pixel canvas seemed huge for me, what a luxury. I can use 4 pixels width for radicals, and if the other part is complex, it can take up 6 or 7 pixels width. Great, plenty of room. Now I have this ones, 7 pixel and 9 pixel, and I call them the Dinky Bitmap family. So with Dinky Bitmap, I proved that it's totally possible to design hands in 7x7 pixel grids. There had been such small bitmap fonts and even smaller in Japan. So why, in the history of the Chinese computer, not long though, no such official or commercial Chinese bitmap font in 7 pixel has ever been released until now. Firstly, I think we can exclude policy factors, though standard writing is important to the policy makers. For example, the 11 by 11 pixel font, which is so far away from being standard, has been widely used with the Windows OS for more than 10 years. I think there may be two other reasons. Unlike Japanese, Hans is all we have in Chinese, so every one of them should be as clear as possible to ensure readability. It is more difficult than designing a Japanese bitmap font, in which Kanji's role is only auxiliary, and are used together with kanas. It is easier to make a contextual guess. Note, even in Japan, 7x7 and smaller was not widely used as well. And then, for native Chinese readers, strokes and stroke order are important in recognizing a hanzi, while in Japan, kanji are probably read by their shapes or silhouettes. This can be seen from the Japanese style simplification in Misaki Gothic 7x7 glyphs. But how do Chinese people actually recognize a hanzi? This remains to be investigated. Anyways, let's turn to the dinky bitmap family. These two can be used together, creating a typographic hierarchy in low res conditions. Or they can be used separately. Nanpixel proves to be excellent in readability. It can be comfortably used for short paragraphs. If someone wants to convey a sense of retro, as in Kernel Panic, a Chinese tech podcast website. Or, if you want to translate the Game Boy UI to Chinese, Dinky Bitmap 7 Pixel is likely your only choice. And we shouldn't forget that nowadays there are still quite a lot of LED pixel displays in use, especially on the public transportations, mostly because of their high brightness that can be seen clearly against the direct sunlight. Dinky Bitmap brings a lot of opportunities. With this small set glyphs, all the necessary information could be accommodated in one steel screen, and passengers can read it in one glance. Dinky Bitmap, the smallest Chinese pixel font ever, and probably forever, 
is designed as a functional complement to the small set dot matrix Chinese. It is also a love letter to the pixel world. The charm of the pixel art lies in strict limitation, and the infinity possibilities squeezed out of it. That is what Dinky Bitmap tried to accomplish. In this low-res world, artists today are still making stunning paintings and wonderful games. What about us type designers? We can imagine small hands pixel typefaces which were never born in those days. As well as other non-lighting scripts which weren't lucky enough to be pixelated before the technological jump into a higher resolution world such as Javanese, Mongolian, or other fine things. So this is the romance of Pixel. I'm Willy Liu from 3Tap, a tap foundry in Shanghai, and thanks for your listening. Let's see, in the chat room, uh, there are some questions, I think. Oh, Steve has the first question, what is GB stands for? And uh, Ken had already answered okay. it. Yeah, GB equals Guo Biao, it's short for Guo Jia Biao Zhun, or it is just national standard in Chinese. So it, it is just a Chinese national standard. Yes, you mentioned many times for GB, but <laughs> uh, for uh, for somebody which is not familiar with the coding in Chinese, they may not know what is GB stands for. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ken, to answer the question instead of Weili. Then, So we can also see Ken said maybe the slide maybe is broke <laughs> your videos. <laughs> but anyway, I pass it again. So it, it, I think the second time is quite well. And uh, Steve also mentioned that uh, theoretically there are about 563 trillion possibility to make seven by seven bitmap characters. Yeah, so, theoretically, just like combinations, different combinations of each pixel, uh, black or white. But uh, but hands, but characters are. Uh, how to say it's specific uh, graphic, specific shapes, specific patterns. So a lot of them are, how to say, maybe useless. Or, or they stand for some other scripts. Yeah, you can make a lot of uh, patterns, but not every mm -hmm. part can become the characters. Yes. So it's also about readability. And how how do we shape the pixels that can be read as a character? So all it it would be just a random patterns or maybe like this. Yes. So maybe Willy, you can uh, copy and paste the link mm -hmm. of your font, the Dicky bitmap, into the chat so that our attendees can check it on your website, maybe. Oh, okay, okay, sure. But do you have English pages? Uh, no, but, but, but uh, I, I think we'll update it into maybe some English cool. version, but uh, we can also just uh, see the, the, the pictures. Yeah. So wait me for a minute. Okay, now it's on the chat room. So for any entity who is interested in the way this work, the 
dinky bitmap. Please check the videos, uh, check the links in our chat room. Okay. So if there is no more questions, I think the session can be finished here. So, so you have any any more to say to Willy to our audience? Oh, oh, yeah. In fact, I think maybe I can uh, maybe I can thank somebody here. Uh, I want to express my uh, great uh, 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 thank thankfulness to uh, Professor. Thomas Mulani, who gave us a great speech last year in Tokyo in Taipei about Chinese bitmap that gave me a fresh perspective to see my own design here. And also, I'd like to thank Toshi Yama Magali sent inspiration for my passion of the pixel world here as well. So uh, I, I think here, the uh, here, uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshi Yuki Kano is also here. So I, I also get a lot of inspirations from his articles. It's called Zojinoma, Zojinoma books. It's an individual blog. So just uh, posted some brilliant articles about Bitcoin candy. So I think that's all for me. <laughs> OK, great work. And uh, thank you for your coming to ATAPI 2020. And thank you for the audience. Thank you so much to our sponsors, including Adobe, Google, Sando, Hanyi, Morisawa, Polish Japanese Academy, and uh, PhoneLab. And thank you, everybody. And we have some more good sessions about Chinese and coming up next. So um, check it out on our agenda pages. And all of you are welcome to our hangout room. And today is Halloween. You can get a, a costumed party there. So <laughs> see you there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.